psychoanalysis technique series of lectures 11th lecture in the series subject for today is why patients leave this is something very important for therapists all across their lives and especially more so in the initial part of their career. When a therapist is young, just starting off, and a patient leaves, and inevitably patients leave when one begins therapy, it becomes a very anxiety-provoking, almost a quarter traumatic situation for the therapist himself. More often than not, the therapist starts blaming himself for the patients leaving the therapy. The guilt is compounded often by fault finding by the supervisor. And this obfuscates the real issue of why patients leave. A patient leaving therapy is a very important event in the therapy. And there are numerous reasons because of which a patient may leave therapy. A patient may leave therapy because of one reason or two reasons or a couple of reasons or very different set of reasons put together. It is necessary to know what are the reasons why patients leave therapy. <clears throat> Understanding this does not mean that the therapist is absolved of any wrongdoing. What it means is the therapist is accountable for his mistakes but not responsible for something that he has not committed. And we see here that a patient can leave therapy for many reasons. Some of the reasons pertain to a mistake or a limitation on part of the therapist. But there are many reasons why a patient leaves therapy. And many of those reasons have nothing to do with any limitation or mistake on part of the therapist. So accountability, yes. Irrational guilt, no. So this is very important because once we know why patients leave therapy, if it is in our control, we can try our best to prevent it. If there are limitations on our part, we can work on ourselves. If there are limitations on part of the therapy process, we can try to innovate or we can do research. And if reasons have nothing to do with us as therapists or beyond our control, then we have to do reality acceptance and accept the fact that some patients will leave therapy. Percentage will reduce over time. Absolute numbers will reduce over time. But there's never going to be a time in the life of a therapist when no patient leaves him if he practices for long enough. So patients leaving therapy is a fact of life. However, as we gain experience, fewer patients in absolute numbers leave us. Percentage of patients leaving us reduces and the reasons why patients leave us, they become more therapist agnostic rather than being therapist dependent. So with this background, let's enter into this very important topic from a technique standpoint, 
and from psychoanalysis standpoint and psychotherapy standpoint in general. Why patients new therapy? If we put together all the reasons why patients leave therapy, we actually end up in the list of almost 50 reasons, 5050, why patients leave therapy. These 50 reasons we can categorize into these six groups. We just number it. So we can classify, we can make a list of reasons why patients leave therapy. And I have been able to come across or I have been able to create a list of about 50 reasons, 5050, why patients leave therapy. There would be more reasons uh, that I don't recollect at present or maybe I don't know. I am sure if one goes deeper into it, one can find 25 more reasons. However, what I have done is the 50 reasons I could enumerate I have classified into six categories. Category one, reasons related to entry of the patient into therapy. How has the patient started therapy? How did he enter into the therapy? So there are reasons related to the patient's entry, which might be responsible for his leaving therapy. Second category of reasons, it pertains to the personality of the patient. His personality makeup, his ego strength, his being psychologically minded or otherwise, his being interested in an inward journey or otherwise, his being patient or impatient, his being honest to see difficult parts of himself or otherwise. All other all these factors are I call. Second category of reasons related to patient's personality. Third category of reasons pertains to the therapy itself, the frame of the therapy, the concepts of the therapy, the technique of the therapy. So if you are using CBT or psychoanalysis or ISTDP, whatever therapy you are using, Related to that therapy, there is a frame, there are concepts, there is a technique, there is an evaluative process, there are psychological tests and all of that reasons related to those aspects which may be responsible for a patient leaving therapy, I have put it in category 3. Reasons related to therapy, meaning reasons related to the frame of the therapy, concepts of the therapy, technique of the therapy, evaluative process of the therapy or psychometrics related to the therapy. Fourth category of reasons pertains to reasons related to the therapist. This is where we have to focus the most. This relates to the limitations of the therapist's knowledge, limitations of his skill, accidental acting out, going too fast or too slow, and things of that type. Fifth category of reason is a broader area of the way Western psychotherapy is in general. So in point number three, we have seen issues related to any particular therapy that you are using. And in fifth point, we are seeing issues related to the whole framework of Western psychotherapy in general. And issue uh, 
sixth one sorry it's a mistake The sixth one pertains to reality reasons, reasons related to reality. So these are not reasons related to the patient's personality or therapist or the therapy or psychotherapy in general, but issues related to reality or reality reasons. So if we categorize all 50 reasons that I have enumerated because of which a patient may leave therapy, we can classify all those 50 reasons into these six categories. Category first, reasons related to the entry. Second, patient's personality. Third, the type of therapy we use, its frame, its technique, its healing process its concepts, category four related to the therapist, category five related to psychotherapy, uh, Western psychotherapy landscape in general, and category six, reasons which are reality anchored reasons. Nothing to do with the frame or technique. They are reasons of reality because of which a patient may have to leave their records. So let us look one by one into all these categories and detail out in each category, what are the specific reasons because of which a patient may leave therapy? First category, entry. It's very important how the patient has entered into therapy. Because when we analyze patients who leave therapy, often it comes out that it had to happen one way or the other because of the way the patient had entered into therapy. And there is no point blaming the therapy or the therapist or the Western psychotherapy model in general in cases where the patient is leaving primarily because of something to do with the way he entered therapy. Let us look at some of the reasons. If a, patient's, if a patient enters into therapy not because of his volition, but because he is under influence of parents, teachers, friends, then for that category of patients, it's very difficult to continue deep therapy for a long time. Patients with narcissistic personality disorder or patients with psychosis that is anchored in regression to the state of primary narcissism. These two patients come to my mind where usually they don't want to come for therapy and if they wish to come, if they come, they come under the influence of somebody, mostly it is the parents or the spouse or family members. Because they are not motivated enough, interested enough, Many of these patients drop out from therapy after a few sessions. So the very entry, the way it happened, for warned us in a way that very likely the patient may not stay there for long. So the type of entry itself gives us a forewarning. And the two categories I mentioned, narcissistic personality disorder and psychosis incurred in primary narcissism or psychosis with catatonic features. These categories, and maybe some more, I don't recollect. Yeah, some, some uh, very substantial part of uh, addiction also. 
So in these categories, patient may have come to therapy under influence of somebody. Uh, in Asian countries, it's also uh, patients coming for sexual orientation who are forced by their parents to seek therapy. So these are categories of patients who come to therapy under influence of someone else, not out of free volition. So they are very likely to drop out of therapy midway. Because they never came out of full volition as the therapy gains depth, it becomes too much for them to bear and they wriggle out of it. Second group of patients who were sent to therapy because of a reference from the psychiatrist. Again, lack of motivation, lack of volition, lack of will, and so high dropout rates as the therapy gains depth. Third group, sent to therapy because of a law prescription under some reform or rehabilitation, social affirmative action situation. Again, no motivation and therefore the exit very likely. Fourth group, sent to therapy by school, college, club or any organization where they are working. And because they are sent by somebody, again, low motivation, high probability of dropout. Fifth group that comes to therapy because it has become fashionable. They see some celebrity talking about therapy, how he or she was in therapy, and they want to mimic that celebrity. So they go into therapy. But very soon they realize it's not as delicious and glamorous as it appears on the screen. So they drop out. Sixth group, which wants a miracle, they have come into therapy looking for a miracle. That something will happen and I will change completely without doing much on my part. So the miracle seeking group, magic seeking group. Again, high rates of dropout. Seventh group, which doesn't know about therapy and they believe it will be based on a medical model where the therapist tells them what to do, they do it and they get well. And when they are asked to explore themselves and decide for themselves and take responsibility, they eject out. They feel therapist is not giving anything or the therapist is not competent to give. Eighth group, which wants a time-structured treatment. The group wants tangible outcomes, say in one month or one year or one quarter. And when they see that kind of time-limited outcome is not possible in a predictable way, they drop out. Ninth group, comes to therapy because they don't know what to do and they want somebody else to tell them what to do. So these are decision making problems people want to settle in therapy. So they want to take a decision. They have a difficulty in taking decision and they feel therapy will help them to take a decision because a therapist will give a decision. And when they see that it's not coming, they don't see the value of it. Tenth group. That comes to therapy is looking at do-it-yourself exercises. They feel the therapist will give me some do-it-yourself and then I will practice it and I will get well. They feel the distance between two sessions is very unproductive and a waste of time and they want to make use of it and substantial amount of healing has to happen in a do-it-yourself mode and less dependent on the session healing. 
So that group also gets frustrated, particularly in psychoanalysis, not so much in CBT, but especially in psychoanalysis, even in ISTDP. And this group also ejects out. There are two more groups. Eleventh group is when the patient comes into therapy because he's chasing the therapist. The person is looking out for a romantic partner and unconsciously or consciously the person is chasing the therapist. And when that motivation cannot be fulfilled, the person ejects out of therapy. Often it happens that some trainee or some student or some participant in a conference looks at the therapist, gets attracted to the therapist and then he feels or she feels that the only way to get the therapist as a partner is by first getting close to him through the therapy process and then to have him. So it's a romantic chase of the therapist which brings the person to therapy. And when that romantic desire is not satisfied, the person ejects heartbroken out of therapy. And this is a situation where it is so clear at times that it's not unconscious that you can interpret and get it away or resolve it with interpretation. Neither omission nor interpretation will help. It is so explicit and so strong. So that is the 11th group where the group is into therapy to get the therapist. And when the desire is not satisfied, they eject out of therapy. Twelfth group is which comes to therapy to address their loneliness. And when they get company in real life, they see no reason to be in therapy anymore because the problem is solved in real life. So they eject out of therapy. Now we see these 12 reasons for leaving therapy all related to the way the person enters into therapy. And none of them is a reflection either on therapy or on the therapist. So if a patient leaves out of any of these reasons, there is no reason for the therapist to feel guilty or beat himself up because these reasons are out of control for any therapist. So these 12 reasons, there might be more, relate to the way the person enters into therapy. Second category of reasons pertains to the personality of the patient. These are personality-oriented reasons, personality of the patient, why a patient may leave therapy. First group, patients may leave therapy because the patient is very narcissistic and narcissistic personalities find it very difficult when therapy gains depth and the core of their And the core of their narcissism is threatened. So patient may leave therapy because of the personality being extremely narcissistic. And it might be such a constellation of narcissism that no technique of therapy or no therapist can actually handle it. In 
in most cases, it is not such an extreme situation. And the skill of the therapist does count here. The knowledge of the therapist does count here. Technique also counts. Here. So if a patient leaves therapy because he's extremely narcissistic, it is a case-by-case -case analysis of his living. In some cases, the situation is no therapist and no therapy can help. In some cases, it is the mistake of or the limitation of either the therapy technique or the therapist. Second, the patient is fragile and the therapy process makes it very difficult for the patient to bear it. Kahnberg divides patients into four categories. Category 1, patients who cannot be given psychoanalytic psychotherapy. They are so fragile. Category 2, patients who can be given only supportive psychoanalytic psychotherapy. Category 3, patients who can be given the regular interpretative psychoanalytic psychotherapy. And Category 4, which he doesn't define, I have created the fourth category, where challenge and confrontation also can be used. Kohut has a very different take on this. So Kohut doesn't believe that category one cannot be given psychoanalytic psychotherapy. He only says, that the technique has to be changed. It, had, it has to be converted from, not converted. You have to shift the, your tech, I mean, the technique to be used is Kohushyan rather than classical psychoanalytic psychotherapy technique. So in the regular psychoanalytic psychotherapy technique, if the patient is fragile, the therapy frame itself can create disintegration. Interpretation can create disintegration. And if the disintegration and regression is very heavy, the patient will worsen instead of getting better. He will feel more uncomfortable than comfortable. So a patient may leave because of his own fragility. And here, in extremely fragile patients, anybody who is not into the cohesion part, we find it difficult to handle. So the knowledge and skill in cohesion technique is essential. And if somebody cannot be handled even with a cohesion technique, then it is nobody's limitation. We just have to accept it that the person is not cut out for psychoanalytic psychotherapy of any kind. Person may be too lazy to make the effort of the inner journey and therefore eject out of it. Very strong fixation in inertia. The patient may not be psychologically minded and finds it very strange to be on the couch or even face to face and undertake that inner journey, inner discussion and therefore may eject out of therapy. A regression may be too heavy. That may be the fifth reason. The frame itself can cause a very heavy regression in fragile patients. Call for emotional closeness, explicit or implicit, can be another reason for a regression, very severe regression. And this happens often in ISTDP kind of technique where there is an explicit call for emotional closeness. Because emotional closeness can be too threatening. Doing therapy in here and now, instead of then and there, can also be very threatening to many people. A fragile self may cause very heavy regression. Too deep an interpretation or too strong or difficult to bear an interpretation can cause heavy regression. Sixth category, the pathology may be too heavy. And the moment you touch it, 
it just goes unbearable. And there the question is then of calibration and going the cohesion way. And if one doesn't have that capability, patient may leave. And here we see the technique and therapist also are responsible, partly. And partly the constitution of the patient. Unsuitability to any particular kind of therapy. The personality of the patient may be such that the patient may respond very well to approaches of mysticism, spirituality, energy healing, but may not respond very well to the classical format of Western psychoanalytic psychotherapy. And this is a group which ejects out of psychotherapy and goes to mysticism and spirituality and shows improvement. The personality of the patient may have elements where going to therapy is seen as a defeat or something shameful. Opening up oneself may also induce unbearable shame. And out of this unbearable sense of defeat or out of unbearable sense of shame, Shame not only of one's incapability, but of exposing the shame-provoking parts of oneself. That it may happen that you come to a point where the person wants to say something but feels it so shameful that he just can't say it and he terminates the therapy. Because of the transferential phenomena, the patient may develop an infatuation with the therapist and then it becomes unbearable. The patient can't say it. Even if he says it, he can't have the desire fulfilled. And then the patient is not able to work through that frustrated desire and he leaves the therapy. Eleventh reason may be the patient's personality is such that he doesn't have many friends for a very long time and he is feeling lonely and therefore has come to therapy and what situation improves in the outer world, he leaves the therapy. Or his schizoidal part of personality as it gets healed, he leaves therapy because he's primarily there to heal that schizoidal part. Twelfth reason, the patient may have come to the therapy because he wants to build up something for some legal problem he is involved in or likely to be involved in. And if that legal problem is solved, or he has found some other way to tackle that problem without uh, any help from the therapy or the therapist, pros therapist. He doesn't have to drag therapy and therapist into that legal case and therefore he leaves the therapy. So we see here, when it comes to point number 12, 11, 7, 6, 3, there is nothing that a therapist can do. So if he leaves out of these issues, there is no need for the therapist to feel guilty and beat himself up. If he leaves for other issues which are there on the slide, then partly it is due to therapy, partly due to therapist, and then one has to work on one's mistakes and limitations. So this is second category of reasons related to patient's personality because of which a patient will leave therapy. Third set of reasons why a patient may leave therapy relates to 
the therapy itself whatever therapy we are using cbt psychoanalysis istdp in this category you can easily make a list of 50 reasons i have put the top 15 that came to my mind first the frame of therapy the frame of therapy itself is uncomfortable to a group of patients and they may leave because of frame reasons. The frame may be seen by many as unsocial, rude, unequal or threatening or something that evokes unbearable, unconscious feelings. Second, the type of therapy used. There may be a group of patients who will do okay with psychoanalytic psychotherapy but not ISTDP. Another group which will do okay with CBT but not with psychoanalysis. Third one which will do well with EDT but not with CBT. So the compatibility of type of therapy and the personality and the pathology, that may be a reason where because of a mismatch between personality, pathology and type of therapy, a person may leave therapy. Reason three, during the process of therapy, Affect mobilization happens in a reckless way and then becomes destructive. I call it DAM, destructive affect mobilization. And I always say, DAM if you DAM. In cognitive therapies, this risk is less. In therapies which are based on affect, psychoanalysis, EDT, ISTDP, Emotion centered therapy. Some parts of psychodrama. This reason is very important. That therapist could not control a calibrated mobilization of effect. And therefore too much effect or very difficult to bear effect has got mobilized. And that unbearability of it makes the person leave therapy. The person just will go silent or leave, and leave therapy or the person will have intense anger towards the therapist, bottled up and leave, or the person may even fight with the therapist and leave. So if he fights, then the sequence of event will be intervention of the therapist, mobilization of destructive effect, Transference onto the therapist, acting out, fight, leaving the therapy. The speed of the therapy may be too fast or too slow. And that may be one more reason for leaving. And it's a question of calibrating the therapy to the patient. Transference, if it is not interpreted at the right time, can build up and become unbearable and the person can leave therapy. Projective identification from the therapist to the patient also is one reason. Very unlikely, but it happens at times. Usually we talk about a one-way traffic. Transference and projective identification from the patient to the therapist. But in fact, it happens both ways. So there are two transferences, two counter transferences, and often two projective identifications in the room. It may be one projective identification only, but it may be two. Now there are two aspects related to projective identification. One, Projective identification from the therapist to the patient, which is rare. Second, 
because of that the person may leave or because the person may see it often as de-idealizing him, dehumanizing him, humiliating him. Or the projective identification from the patient cannot be held by the therapist. That also can become a reason for leaving. There can be a thought action confusion that if the person says something in therapy, it's almost equivalent to committing it in reality and having to face consequences of that in reality. And this unconscious difficulty can many times lead to ejection from therapy. Intense guilt because of unconscious material coming up or because of rage towards parents or rage towards the therapist or because of guilt related to the sexual parts of oneself can also be the reason for leaving therapy. It becomes unbearable as therapy deepens. Building up of attachments, attachment with the therapist can be seen as threatening. It happens in two ways. One, the group of people who are used to fusion, they fear another fusion with the therapist and in the past fusion has give them, given them pain and entrapment without any way to extricate oneself and get released from that entrapment. So they fear another entrapment with the therapist. So that is one way. The second is those who attach very strongly. So one, those who have fear of attachment and second, those who attach very strongly and then there is a fear of separation. Very painful. So because it has happened many times in the past, they have unconsciously, unconsciously decided never again, not to attach ever again. And the attachment is now happening with the therapist. So the anxiety related to unbearable pain of separation rises. That can be a reason for leaving. Confidentiality, fear of breach of confidentiality, especially if it's a small town and everyone knows everyone, or if one is from a mental health area itself or some form of clinical medical area, this is very, very strong. Or if somebody is very rich or very famous or in public life, confidentiality becomes often an issue why people leave because they no longer feel safe. One group feels the therapy process doesn't give them adequate freedom. The therapist intervenes or the frame directs and this whole foundation of Western psychotherapy, of reflecting, not acting, and conducting oneself in the therapy room within the frame of therapy, that itself is seen as denial of freedom, and therefore people leave. Very small group, but it does happen. Some people find interpretations very rude, and therefore leave, and this is usually the mistake of the therapist. Some find the therapy process very inhuman, which is centered on faults and limitations and not appreciative of talents and the good parts of human nature. They see the Western psychotherapy process as very negative in its approach, spirit and constitution. So they leave. 
Some see this as very unsocial, impersonal, cold, and distancing enterprise, very unsocial enterprise. They are not comfortable, so they leave. And this group finds itself quite at home in spiritual approaches to healing, especially group approaches to healing. Some want predictable time-bound results from any given therapy. And when the therapy cannot, therapy process cannot give a commitment for time-bound outputs, they leave. So these 15 reasons, and I, I'm sure there will be 25 more, relate to therapy. Why patients leave therapy? If we look into this 15, the therapist is not responsible for first. Fifty. that is more the state of knowledge. In the rest of the things, it's a combination of mistakes, limitations of therapist, and limitations and mistakes of the therapy itself. So this is an area where in the area of therapy and the knowledge and skill of therapist, in both these areas, substantial work can be done to prevent a patient leaving therapy. And if because of these reasons patients leave therapy, then the accountability and appropriate guilt due to the therapist is realistic. One more category of reasons why patients leave therapy and this has to do with the therapist. Some patients leave therapy because in the middle of the therapy, they come to know something about the therapist and they don't wish to continue anymore. This may be related to reputation of the therapist, his having been censored or punished in the past or something related to his knowledge or skill, which is in the negative domain of things. So somebody may leave therapy because of what one hears about the therapist in the real world outside. Second is the training of the therapist. And this is a very big area. The knowledge and the skill of the therapist. Unfortunately, we don't have today therapists, particularly in psychoanalysis, who appreciate or have the capability to appreciate multiple schools and be able to mix and match concepts as necessary. So the limitations of knowledge and skill of the therapist is a very big area related to training of the therapist. And because of limitation on this part, patients leave therapy. Take example of a situation where a fragile patient, a fragile patient needs a cohesion technique and the therapist is trained only in Freudian or Kleinian technique. He applies conventional psychoanalytic technique to somebody who needs a potion technique. And because of his own limitation of concept and of knowledge and skill, the patient leaves therapy. Unsuitability. The personality of the therapist and the personality of the patient are just two poles apart. And therefore, because of the unsuitability of the therapist personality, somebody leaves. The therapist may not be able to do holding because he's not trained in holding or doesn't even know much about holding and therefore patient may leave. 
by which the therapist, therapist may act out. Say for example, the patient puts anger into the therapist through projective identification and the therapist gets angry at the patient. He acts out the projective identification. Because of that, patients may leave. The patient may be testing the therapist by seducing him and the therapist acts out. Therefore, the patient leaves. Sixth reason, the therapist may not be able to hold the frame. He establishes a frame and then breaks the frame or allows the break to frame to be broken or dilutes the frame and therefore the patient leaves. Now this is a very contextual element. Patients with psychosis with borderline, they need a very tight frame. But many other patients, they actually need frame with some flexibility. So there are both groups, people who leave therapy because the frame has been diluted and there are people who leave therapy because the frame is too strict. So one has to contextualize the frame to the patient. But because of the frame holding either too tight or too loose, a patient may leave. Calibration of the speed of the depth and of the difficult to bear nature of interpretations is often a reason for leaving. People interpret too fast, too deep. First and sec first or second session, if they go on to very deep interpretations, becomes unbearable and the patient leaves. Eighth situation, there is too much of supervision. The supervisor comes with a different background, the therapist comes from a different context, the supervisor gives his wisdom, which is out of context. The, thera the therapist, because he is young, literally obeys the supervisor, puts it into action and the patient leaves. In this situation, the patient leaves more because of the supervisor than the therapist. Ninth reason. The therapist is very ambitious, wants to heal quickly. And in that narcissism, he starts interpreting the problem right at its roots in the very first few sessions. The safest thing to do is to go from the leaves to the branch, to the trunk, to the root. But if one is conceptually strong and very ambitious, one goes straight to the root and that causes unbearable destructive effect to get mobilized and the person leaves. The knowledge and skill of the therapist, and this is the main reason today, that therapists coming into the profession are not trained well enough by the colleges or by the centers, and therefore patients leave. One of the biggest reasons today is limitation on in terms of knowledge and skill of the therapist. And both are responsible institutes are not interested in teaching deep and students are not interested in learning deep. Both are responsible. Eleven mistakes made by therapist because of which a patient may leave and we all make mistakes and we continue to make mistakes. There's nothing like a mistake-free life or a mistake-free therapy. Just that over a period of time, number of mistakes we make has to reduce and the mistakes have to become more related to our deep-seated characterological problems and not to the process of intervention. A patient may leave if the transference buildup becomes too negative or too positive. Too negative because of anger, or guilt related to anger, when it is too positive, then some group fears acting out or fears pain which will come if the desires are not fulfilled. 
or fears the pain of separation after attachment. Thirteenth reason, yeah, transference can also, in this, when it comes to reason number 12, transference, right interpretation at the right time can save the patient from leaving. If it remains uninterpreted for a very long time, the patient may leave. And at times, the reverse is true. Certain transferences which are of erotic nature, particularly between a therapist and a patient with different genders. In many cases, it is best to allow the transferences just to pass by and not to interpret them. And if you interpret, the logical conclusion of that is the patient leaving. So the positive transferences, we have to be careful about not to interpret all of them, but the negative transference definitely has to be interpreted. But in reason, a patient may leave because he feels therapist is not intellectually developed enough for him. And this is true often. You have a situation where a middle-aged person who is a professor comes to a therapist who is in his 20s and there is a very substantial intellectual difference between the two and often the technique is not enough. The intellectual capability of the person also comes into play. So there is a group of patients, very intelligent patients who leave because the intellectual development of the therapist is not enough. They find him wanting. Another group of patients with mystical, spiritual, artistic orientation, they leave because they find the therapist is not developed enough in terms of overall self-development or spiritual self-development. Some leave therapy because they find the therapist too negative. They don't see the positivity, safety and cheerfulness in the therapist they wish to see. So, we see that in most of these areas, with knowledge, skill, self-development, self-correction, patient leaving the therapy can be minimized, can be reduced. So this is the third or rather the fourth category of reasons why, why patients leave therapy. One more category of reasons why patients leave therapy has to do broadly with the landscape of Western psychotherapy. The landscape today is divided into schools that are focused on thought or effect or behavior. Very few combine all the three. And no school combines healing approaches related to energy healing. The type that we see in Reiki, Pranic, Healing, Tai Chi, Acupressure, Acupuncture, or Crystal Healing, or anything healing approaches used in mysticism and spirituality. And there is a group of patients who wants the combination. They want holistic healing and therefore they find present day approaches to psychotherapy 
especially of the Western framework, limited and they leave therapy. They go into some holistic therapy which combines these elements. Second group that use <coughs> that use therapy is because they want the self-development process not only to heal pathology, but guide them on the path of holistic healing. They want the therapy to guide them on the path of holistic living. And they leave therapy because they don't find uh, any school in Western psychotherapy to help them the way they want to be helped. Some leave therapy because they see in the Western psychotherapy approach in all the schools absence of equality. The anonymity of the therapist, non-revelation, non-self-revelation of the therapist, The frame largely being in the hands of the therapist, largely being dictated by the school itself. So they don't find it comfortable and they leave. Among the groups that we are talking about, some want more empowerment, more do it yourself <clears throat> endeavor towards healing. They want to do more alone than with the therapist. They want therapy, they want the therapist, they want the session, but they want of the entire healing process more ought to be done by themselves alone. Even if under the guidance of the therapist, even if with the tools given by the therapist and less of the healing to happen in the session, they want more do-it-yourself format, more empowering format. They see this as too much of dependence and too much of wasting of time between sessions and therefore they leave. One group wants a structured journey. They want what is called a process-oriented therapy, a structured process of therapy, which is both structured and holistic. So you deal with the cognitive aspect, the affective aspect, the energy aspect, the karmic aspect. They don't find such a structured journey, so they live. Another group is not comfortable or is not able to accept or is not convinced with the conceptual explanations given by any school. So they read through the school, they discuss with somebody, they feel something is not correct. They try to talk to the therapist. Still, if they don't feel convinced, they leave because of conceptual differences with the school. Happens many times in the Freudian approach on the point of Oedipus. Seventh is results. They want milestones on the journey, predictable results. And they are not satisfied with the speed of the results or the nature of the results. So they leave. So these patients who leave because of these reasons. are living largely because of issues at the level of the school, very macro category of issues. So these are issues related to the Western psychotherapy landscape or the landscape of a particular school. And there is little that 
a regular therapist can do much about. Last category of reasons why people leave, why patients leave therapy, is a set of reasons that are rooted in reality. There is nothing related here to the psychotherapy landscape or type of therapy or the therapist or the patient's personality. I, I should not say the patient's personality. Uh, these are reasons of reality which are related to, which are not related to the therapy, therapist or Western psychotherapy landscape in general. There are definitely are issues related to the reality and the personality of the patient. So the patient may leave because of the cost element. For some reason, he is not able to bear cost. Either the income goes down or he just feels it's too costly or he sees return on investment is not adequate. So because of cost element, he leaves. Or he does, just doesn't have time because of his profession and he leaves. Or he moves to another city and he leaves. Or the stressors present in his life are too high for therapy to really give him very good results. All that the, all that the therapy does is more than undone by the stressors around him. And therefore he has no choice but to take heavy medication or something else. <clears throat> or he just has to wait for the stressors to go low. Some people believe here that because the stressors are present, all the more reason to go for therapy. There is, however, another group which doesn't think that way and that moves away from therapy into pure medication. Fourth reason in reality is the compatibility of the patient and the type of therapy rooted in reality. That there may be a suitability problem and the person leaves. The fifth is capacity of the person, which again is a reality oriented problem. So suitability and capacity are reality oriented issues of the personality. So there may be a genuine issue of capacity that given the type of therapy you are practicing, the person doesn't have capacity. So suitability and capacity to the type of therapy you are practicing may be a reason the person leaves therapy. So we see here more than 50 reasons we have enumerated why a person leaves therapy and the therapist is not responsible every time a patient leaves therapy. There is no reason to feel guilty and beat up oneself if a patient leaves. There is no reason to rush to a supervisor every time a patient leaves. Of course, one has to reflect every time a patient leaves and if one is accountable or has limitations, we have to address oneself. Thank you.